Yay! It did go on. I was worried for a minute. It kept just going around and around, but we are here together. Hello, everybody. Sorry to keep you waiting. I, w I was trying to get my hair brushed, and I finally got my hair brushed. It's kind of a mess because I just washed it. I got down here. I meant to bring my hair dryer down here with me, and I forgot. So, but this is exciting. And um, Mark, poor thing, he's getting ready for the colonoscopy. Don't tell anybody. That's a secret, okay? He's going to have a colonoscopy, but you have to promise not to tell anybody. <laughs> Last time I said, I mentioned to the ladies, he goes, I know, you didn't have to tell them. But you know me, I tell y'all everything. What can I say? So, um, I went, I went off to Greensboro yesterday. And do you see that sewing machine on the table over there? Right there? That is my sewing machine that's been in the shop from June. I brought it home long enough to say, you know what? The, uh, the scissor thing's not working. It, it hangs up my thread. And they've been saying for quite a while that they're waiting on a part. But I kind of think six months is enough. So when I was at my retreat, I kind of was talking to somebody. And they said, oh, they held on to my machine for months. And I said, well, I took it to them. Because when you called and asked their turnaround time, they talked about it being so fast. And it wasn't in the before they even supposedly had a part issue and then this i mean it's like it's december okay and so and you know what i'm very sorry they they could have been telling me the absolute truth and maybe nobody can get a part in for me but i wanted my baby back home and then while i was at the retreat one of the ladies said oh i take mine to so and so and she has a juki and she takes it to another person who's really good with juki. So I, I was just cutting off a dead leaf. Do you know how I tell y'all that I have the attention span of a gnat? Well, I do. I'm sitting here talking to y'all, telling you about my day going out of town. And I'm, I see this leaf, dead leaf, and I have to cut it off. I mean... Come on, Deb. <laughs> anyway, so sorry about that. But anyway, so I went and got my machine back. And I just kind of, he said, oh, did they call and tell you it was ready? I said, no, but it's been here for months and I've just come to get it. And I made sure to time it because they were getting ready to close in 10 minutes. So I figured they wouldn't argue with me about, oh, well, you can't take it now. It's not fixed yet. Sorry, you had your chance. I am taking it home. And if I find that it does need a part that nobody can get, then at least I won't be so far away because it's in the next city over. But at the same time, I dropped off the baby quilt for my newest great nephew and uh, Levi. Isn't that the coolest name? So anyway, I got that quilt washed because I want. I always like to make sure baby quilts are all washed and they smell good and all of that. So I got it all packed up and wrote a card. And hopefully they'll know what side's the front and look at all the little things that I wrote in to it with my long arm machine. So I got that done. I stopped by Michael's and picked up just a couple little more things for our Craft Palooza starting Sunday. And I have been working. Do you see what's on the wall here? The design, my rolling design center. Do you see what's up there? I made my version of a swirl Christmas tree. The only problem with it, I used that brand new gold lame for the star. It doesn't show up. So I'm going to figure out what to do. Because, see, you can hardly tell there's a star on there. And there is a larger drawing of it. 
And I, anybody that wants this pattern for free, and it's my own design. It was inspired by the others that I see, but I, it's mine. It's all mine. I was inspired to thank you for them for thinking of it. Even the star I did was just a happy, sweet tree. Kind of like me, a little goofy, but very happy. <laughs> so, and this has the numbers and dark light or medium, because I thought it would be better if the tree was a little bit scrappy and not just all one fabric or not even just three. So, but I had to move a few things around. Sunday, I will show you how to do this because I like it so much, I'm going to make it in several different colorways so i do really love it this pattern is already on our groups io just go in there and grab it for free i have this on our groups io and i have oops oh cool i don't think i brought all the papers over here but i have paper oh this is the real size drawing so what I have is I, it's on four sheets. See, you can, you can see the, the lines where they join. And, and every piece is numbered and labeled. So you know where you'll be able to figure out with your master. And this master you can use for coloring in or putting scraps of actual fabrics to see how you like it before you cut it there. So, you are very welcome, Miss Cheryl. And then I think I'm going to take and put a double border on this. And I'm just going to do a quick little quilt of it. It's done. I might sew on some little ornaments or something. But I'll see. But Sunday, I'm going to show you how to do this. And I'm going to tell you like how to do it. If you have a light box, it makes it easier. If you don't, I can still help you out. If you don't have a light box or you don't want to hold it up to a window, then when you download this four, four page, one, two, three, four, when you download the four page um, instructions, um, you can download, I mean, print two copies of all four if you want. And then that way you can cut out the actual piece and use it as a template. But, or you can use a light box and draw it onto your fusible. I just did it with fusible. Make it easy. Christmas is coming. I don't have time to do, you know, something too difficult. So I used a good old steam machine too. I like it because it has paper on both sides so you can draw on one. And some of you might even be smart enough to save the copy of the pattern on your machine and then print it directly to your fusible by either using the sheets of steam machine two or cutting your fusible into eight and a half by 11 inch pages and knowing how to run it through so it prints on the right side. That gets tricky and that's between you and your sewing room. <laughs> I can't make that decision for you. Then to show you another thing, this is my favorite time of year because I love making crafts. If I could, I would spend all my time crafting, but I don't think my kids want me to keep giving them all kinds of junk, you know, but <laughs> that's why I've got to start an Etsy shop because I have too many things. All right, so I'll put this over here. But you ready for the newest thing I saw? I have to give credit to this to Bonnie Thompson from um, American Quilter Society, AQS. I got a email newsletter, and she showed making these, and she called her Zentangle Ornaments because she has a book out of Zentangle. I've never done Zentangle. But she had um, a sheet that you could download and print out one of these stars. And then you print it on cardstock. And that way with the cardstock, it's firm enough that you can bend it and it'll look like a 3D star. 
Well, you know how cheap I am. I'm not going to waste your stuff. So there I go. I stayed up till one last night drawing these because I knew that I could fit more than one in on the sheet. I fit four on the sheet. And uh, so, and I printed it on cardstock. Now, mine's just white. If you have color cardstock, all the better. But I'm going to color mine in. I'm going to do the Zentangle first. And she recommends doing it with the Micron pen, which I have some of. And then, so I'm going to try to do Zentangle. And then I'm going to take my markers and I'm going to color them in. And that way I can pick and choose what colors I want where. So I will be showing you Sunday. Also, I'm going to show you the, the, the swirly tree. And I'm going to show you how to do these. But thank you to Bonnie from AQS for a wonderful free pattern, all of that. So I will also put this on our group's I.O. If you're not a member of the group's I.O., I would love for you to join because we love doing stuff like this all the time. I love sharing. I love making the patterns and just giving them to you. It makes my heart happy. And you know what? That is good enough for me. So if you would like to join our group, I'm going to our time to quilt. Whoops. Let me put my glasses on. I'm old, okay, to <laughs> quilt at pwc.com. Whoops, I don't think I left a space. Um, okay, I have my laptop sitting up on a plastic little Dollar Tree basket so that it can be closer to the camera because you'll notice I look back and forth. I try to read the comments you write and look back at the camera so I can talk to you. And uh, sometimes, like I say, I get lost in the shuffle and cut a dead leaf off a plant. I mean, come on. So let me see if you if I can turn this around. It's looking especially pretty. I've been spending so much time down here now that I've been taking really good care of. It's a peace lily. And isn't it looking lovely right here in front of the window? I mean, that is beautiful. So anyway, so it's looking so green and gorgeous that when I saw a dead leaf on it, just it just upset me <laughs> okay um i'm gonna come on and see all who's here prayer for your friends two nieces of a cancer survivor all in the children very sick i am so sorry let me tell you what covid shots are way up because people realize now there are three cases at least we know there's more of the new variety please go get your your shots you know if everyone did their their patriotic duty and got their uh vaccinations then we could put an end to these variants but until you do we're going to keep having variants we'll have to keep getting shots for weeks so please do that right now if you haven't had your booster go get your booster my doctor said get your t-cells working get you know Kind of get your body already into the fighting shape, you know. <laughs> All right. So Barbara Smith was the first person. And there's Debbie. Oh, <laughs> Barbara, um, Debbie comes in under James, her husband, but it's Debbie. And you'll learn that after a while. We have all these different, like Monkey Mary. What is Monkey Mary? But you know what? She's our Mary. She's a, she is great fun. So, anyway, happy December. And I uh, didn't want to change. Yeah, don't, who wants to change their email address at this late stage? So, you got my message. Is that the message I left? I'm on my way because I was hurrying to get ready real fast. So, ready for Christmas and New Year's. Are you kidding? No way. But I, I'm, I'm trying. I'm getting there. So, oh gosh, it's so good to see all of you and our funny Mary. I just love, Mary has the best ideas. She shares the best things. And I told her in an email, keep it up because I like your good suggestions. 
So, oh, last fall. Yeah, poor Mark. He's at that stage of drinking that concoction. At least they let you put Gatorade in it now. And so it's a little better than just trying to drink the junk they used to have that was horrid. So, anyway. But he, now... He, um, you're not ready for 67 years. He, um, he's now, um, oh, you can't eat all day the day before. You can only have clear liquids like, like bouillon broth or, um, ginger ale, um, coffee with no cream, that kind of thing. And then you start, you take these Ducalax and then you take this solution and then you become very good friends with your commode and then tomorrow oh, your internet is bad i'm sorry sweet mary and uh it is so good to see cheryl back here so anyway i don't want to be you know giving you too much information which you know i'm kind of want to do but um but anyway, then tomorrow morning he does, has to down another thing of of solution at seven, starting at seven a.m. Then he can't have anything after ten a.m. Then he we take him in by one thirty, and I've got to pack up some handwork to do because I have to wait there and then take him home because they're going to make him loopy. Now I got to tell you, ladies, okay. Mark can seem like a very... Oh, man, there was a whole lot more people I didn't even see. Mark is... He's always been, since he was a little child, he's been the little man. And I used to call him curmudgeon until he really didn't like that. <laughs> and he can be very serious, you know? And when he's got to do something got to be serious. And even though he's sitting in the dining room, if I go to tickle him as I walk by, he's at work. I'm not supposed to tickle him at work. <laughs> so, but he can then cut up and be funny. So you just never know, you know. But when they last time gave him the happy medicine to do the colonoscopy, he when they tell him he can get up and very carefully with me holding on to him, he can get dressed to leave. He starts dancing. He's going to do an entertainment for all the nurses. And I'm like, honey, your little hospital gown is hanging open in the back. I really don't think you should do your entertaining right now. <laughs> so I've tried to drill it in his head. No dancing tomorrow at the procedure. <laughs> So, oh, heaven help me. I'm going to have to take one of Gromit's leashes and put on him and, you know, you know, what can you do? So, okay, I saw Cheryl and we're talking about names on here, Whispering Cauldron. But my gosh, is she talented. You won't believe the pictures and things she sent of she's going to start every week sending her work. Um, I probably won't show pictures much tonight. Um because we're going to be a little busy, but I'm going to definitely show all of them on Sunday. And we even got a picture, a couple pictures from Miss Diana Wright. So I told her how someone was asking about her and miss seeing her work. So she sent us some pictures. So Sunday, we're going to have a lot of fun. Hello, Ed Nueza Moraes from Brazil. So nice seeing you. Hola. So nice seeing you. So anyway, Mary, we will definitely think of your friend's two nieces, sweetheart. Oh, very good, Barbara Smith. Getting her booster next week. Good job, hon. Let me tell you what. It's so much easier. It's so much easier. Oh, really? So if your test is okay when he reaches 70, he's got six years to go. So we'll see. But then he won't have to take it anymore. That would be good. Let's hope. Okay. Mary got hers a few weeks ago. And Cheryl got her booster in October. Thank you so much. Y'all might not realize, but I am very, very attached to you. 
and I don't want anything to happen to you. So please, you know, when sometimes when I don't see somebody around anymore, I wonder, you know, gosh, I hope they didn't get sick. I will, I will never know. So take good care of yourself. We need you here. So Barbara Smith's a nurse. All right. Well, you do know. And, and, and Barbara, I don't know how you, where you are on this subject, but almost all the people that are in the hospital or dying have not been fully vaccinated. I'm sorry, guys. It is what it is. That's the science. Don't sit around going, well, it's untested. Untested? About a billion people have had vaccinations, and they're doing great. So anyway, sorry. I'm just a little excited tonight. <laughs> So, oh, if he dances, I'll get a video. That's what I'm going to threaten him. If you dance, if you dance, I'm going to snap a video on of you on my phone. Yes, that's what I'll tell him. Uh, you retired in July, huh? That's wonderful. Your daughter's a nurse practitioner. That's wonderful. Isn't that, is that, is that an LPN or... Is it a PA? I forget. Um, but anyway, this conversation is annoying. Is it annoying because you don't believe in vaccinations, Melissa? We just want to keep everyone happy and healthy. So anyway, okay. Now, I know nobody likes to be fussed at. I know. But anyway, okay. So... We are going to show you. I've been working today for hours on this little quilt. And uh, I don't know. Um, so I've been working today on this quilt. And I've been round and round. This is a new this is a new type of discipline. This is a new um, technique for me. It's not something I normally do. So, let me show you. I took a lot of it off and I'm putting it back. And when I see this, when I see those stripes, it scares me. Because I like to do more real realism on the quilts but I'm trying my best trying my best to try to really do something new and unusual and some of the quilts with all of the different stripes or squares or whatever are really fascinating so you see here what I've done is today I went and touched up that little watering hole Okay, then I took lighter shades or the back of the fabrics. Thank you, sweetie. And I put, I tried to use that sunset and show the light on what would be higher areas of the ground where that sunset kind of reflected. And then this, I've been going around and around how to do the sky. And I'm going to leave a little bit of this turquoise, and I put a little turquoise in the water. I think it was Mary that suggested that I do the turquoise in the water. So anyway, and then I put some black down here. I wanted the very dark color to be at the bottom. So now what I'm going to do is to show you a couple little things. And then to show you, when I went to my retreat, they had a prize table. Well, what I did at the prize table is I started grabbing threads. I do so much thread painting that anytime I can get thread, that's a wonderful thing. Then I went in my other threads tonight and I grabbed. This is a beautiful rayon. I think it's a sulky. Beautiful rayon. Here's another rayon. I love the shimmer in these. And it can really, it's, I guess you would call it an abstract, Marsha, because what it was is your eye does amazing things. And so it's like you can read a sentence if they drop out all the vowels. 
because your your brain just fills in the blanks. Here's a woolly nylon. This is really cool stuff to give. Like, well, I'm going to use that for some tall grasses that are just dark because of the sunset. Then I got some black. So I pulled out some of the thread. I probably won't get around to doing some of the thread. I might try to do a little bit of the thread painting. But I guess I've got to finish this last inch and a half or so of the sky. Now, one of the things I need your help. I need your help in helping me figure this out. But um, I want to know whether I should do any of the sun rays going out and up. So let me see. I'll show you why I was thinking maybe of doing that. Do you see right here? You see? I love that. Now... I wanted it straight at first, but then I realized, well, that's water. That's how they made it look like ripply water. So then I thought, well, should I do some of the upright here? You know, they've got some horizontal, but then they have some. So that's what I'm going to get you to help me with. So I was trying to decide. Oh, and I cut out my tree. Now, where is my? Oh, yep. Okay. Here is my tree cut out. I've cut this out today. So I'm probably going to have to run this one into next week so I can show you enough of the thread painting and quilting. So now let me bring it up here. Okay, here we go. All right. Now, I'm thinking of putting this up there all right and then i'm thinking of putting this I, I wasn't sure whether to put his head in front of some of that or not i don't want to have these things too close to each other but maybe something like that would be good now the snowball quilt is done i will oh yay oh you did you finish your snowball star christmas Yet, yeah, I think you did send me. You were the one that sent me the wonderful picture. Okay, so this is what I want you to help me with, okay? And let's see. Hold on. Okay, here we go. Now, what I want you to help me do, I am glad that I put in some lighter things this way. I, I do like these, you know. I didn't make it just black. But the, these, the basics are done in big stripes. But what I need your help with is should I take fabric and let me find some of my smaller ones. Should I make some of them going this way? I, I'm really not sure. This one should go this way right above because this is my lightest color. And then I have some of this, so I could put this, like, here. I don't know. I just don't know. I want it to look like this if I can, but I'm not sure I can. I, I'm, I'm worried. I'm worried. Let me see. Okay, let's see. It would mostly be all the light colors. I really do think so. And, you know, I could have a few like that. Let me get my iron going. All right. Then, I don't know. I don't know. What are your thoughts? I, I wonder if I put enough in, would it look better? But then, is it just going to look too busy? I don't want to overwhelm it. But I definitely wanted a, a... The whole thing of this is to expand expand my playbook. Okay? And, like, some of these I want to build out a little bit over here. But I could, like, put these... 
or I could put them a little closer. Maybe I'll come in here and I guess let's just take a look and see. Um, let me iron some of these. But all right. I could really use your help. So I'll put this here. Maybe put that. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, that's a great idea, Cheryl. I think I like that idea better. I think that I like that. Because this is starting to look hokey to me. I don't want it to look hokey. And But that way, if I used a very delicate thread... To just work. Ah, oh, that is a great idea. Or cut the strips thinner. Exactly. Yeah, because I want you to be able to see the strips to do this exercise. I don't know if I'll always do stuff like this. But it has been good for me to practice. Okay, here we go. Let me bring this up. Okay. Let me get a drink of water. I was, I cut a pineapple today. And I was eating this fresh pineapple, and I choked on some of the juices, and now it's given me a sore throat. Use shapes like you have on the ground. It would probably... It would... I think it would look better. The, the thing I was trying so hard to do... I was trying to do this look. Oh, I do like this part better, though. See, because I, I like it more realistic. Hmm. Huh. Yeah. Yep. Hmm. Yeah, I, I see your point. And then out here, what I'm doing is kind of going to, I'm trying to keep the stripes dark, uh, lighter in the center and then go darker out. But you're right. When it comes between the stripes up here or this, I like this better. Hmm. Oh, instead of strips for that. Okay, so I could leave maybe the sides, but in here, do the rays upwards or what do you think joe do you you y'all several of y'all have a whole lot more experience so i could pull these light strips off do more of a unusual shape like down here but leave the strip the stripes on the side where they don't look so bizarre i really do love y'all's opinions but I, you're right I really love this so much better and I really really love the silhouette of the tree and then someone said maybe put the giraffe a little closer he really shows up on that sky doesn't he that is kind of cool that is kind of cool Yes, yeah, shapes for the rays. All right. I hear what Jody is saying. What do you think, Cheryl? The bigger strips overpower the... Huh. They overpower the top. You hear I haven't done the filling in yet. Because I think Jody might be on to something, too. And I want y'all to tell me. But... All right, let me get out some good colors of the brights. Okay, here we are. And a little bit here would give me some oranges. All right, so... What I could do if I'm 
thinking this right is, and I think I will put the fabrics on this to make it easy. So let me show you what I'm going to do with that. I'm going to get my possible, I want to take this off for now. All right, I think that we're coming up on something. I think putting our heads, to, whoa, Deb, don't run over the steam machine too. Yikes. I got so excited about this idea. Okay. All right. Yikes. All right. Oops, come on. All right, good. Now, so I'm going to flatten this out. Whoops, it got on my iron a little. Okay. Uh. All right, so what I'm going to do, so I'll have some shapes to work with, is I'm going to lay these colors on here. And let me, where is, okay. So I'm kind of going to do this look for right over the sun. But then I think like this, I'm going to keep the, okay. Oh, good. Okay. All right. So let me try this again. And then, yep, I'll put some bright yellow here. I will put some good regular yellow here. So anyway, we've had a couple lukewarm days lately that have been wonderful. And um, I love, 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 love when you have like those Indian summer days. It was so nice to get out and about. Oh, and sad news in the chicken yard. We lost one of our older hens. So, let me see. Mark said, did you count the chickens when they came, when you let them out today? And I said, no, I didn't even think about it. He said, well, I always count them when I go to put them away. And I didn't, I didn't count six. I only counted five. And sure enough. But they are getting pretty old, and, you know, I feel bad for them. Okay, so now I'll put this here, and I'll put this over here, and then that way I can press all of this. As you can see, I expect you to do very precise work. <laughs> but... And I'll, I think I'm going to need some more of this. I'll have to get another package out. All right. So let's see. This is, this is how I do it when all of a sudden you've got an unusual shape of it left. Okay. There we go. And then come here and cut this. All right, and I'll get some more real quick. But now I'm excited about doing this this way. So, all right. All right. All right, I think mm, that's not sticking. Let me, all right. So now if I cut them out, I can work with them as shapes. I hope so. Oh, is Kathy here? Hi, Kathy. In fact, Kathy, I need to email you information if you ever think you'd like to come to that Denton retreat because you live close by. You'd have to put it, your name in, and I can send you an email to the woman who's now in charge of it because I'm not in charge of it anymore. 
I get to just come and enjoy. And that's pretty nice, I've got to say. All right. Let me... I thought I had a package. Yes. Here we are. Okay. I, Mark was watching me try to fill in so carefully to cut out the swirly tree shapes. And... Uh, and I, he said, well, why don't you just put it on the printer and print it? I said, because I would waste some of this paper. And he's like, I think we can buy more. I said, you don't understand. <laughs> I just bought a machine. I've got to really be careful. <laughs> and he just shook his head like, okay, whatever. All right, now let's see. I've got, I've got. A bold yellow, a mild yellow, light yellow, bright yellow, a little bit of orange, a little bit of a greeny yellow. I think now, let, you know what, since I'm going to do shapes instead of just little stripes, I think what I'm going to do is come from here. All right, here we go. But it is wonderful outside. I am so excited to get my tree and get it put up. Whoa, whoa, sorry about that. I bumped into something. All right, this is going to go right here. So I'm just going to quickly cut a strip of this. Okay. Mm hmm um, trying to think of what else I was going to tell you, but we are going Sunday. We're going to be doing so much crafting. It's going to be a lot of fun. So now what I do with this, this is the steam machine too. What I do with this is pull off one side of the paper, lay the fabric on to cover it all up so you, I don't get anything more on my iron. And then I press it. Okay. So I've got these colors and I'll leave this sheet here because if you look at the where here. If you look at this do you see all the different colors that are up in here? Now, I don't really think there's a whole lot of bright orange. But, oh, I know another color is this one. I think this would be a really good one. Hi, Edwinice. How are you feeling, hon? So, let's see. Edwinice was having problems with her leg, and I hope she's gotten all healed now. All right. This is really cool, and you, I can see some of that in the sky. So I'm going to get a piece of this. Jody just got through making a king-size flannel quilt, and it looks so warm. Oh, my goodness. Oh, and I'm thinking, um, Jody, I'm trying to decide. I should have, I told myself, I kept telling myself, make the decision so we can let people know. Since Mark is going to have his procedure tomorrow, it kind of makes me worry if I can be ready Saturday or not. So... If we don't do a Jitsi this coming Saturday, then we'll do it next Saturday. And I can't wait to tell you what this is about. If you weren't here, if you weren't here last Sunday, Mary Mayhem is doing a New Year's Day mystery. And I am a huge fan of mysteries, mystery quilts. I've done them for years. And what a mystery quilt is... It is a quilt you make without knowing what the final outcome is. So she tells you how much fabric, probably what colors you want to choose, or what contrast, high, low, whatever. And then 
um, she'll give you clues on New Year's Day every two hours. She will give you clues as to what to do next. And usually about the fifth or seventh clue, you have a pretty good idea of what you're making. I'm going to pull some of these off real quick. And, you know, I want it's good for you to see this if you at all are new to doing landscape quilts. I don't get kind of... I don't get weird with my quilts because for me, I'm this is like cutting construction paper, coloring in a coloring book, and I can always do this again, always. So when I have something that's not working and... I'm torn between, you know, exactly how to do it, then guess what? Just pull it off and start it again. Because this is maybe 10 cents worth of fabric. And most of this fabric I've just had in my stash for years. So, okay. But see, don't stand on ceremony. Just get rid of it and let's try it again. And uh, Polly was really good at that. She went a whole different direction with a quilt. And I tell you what, she was right. Now this one I'll pull from here. Okay. It's just your time, a little bit of white glue, and a few cents worth of fabric. So it is certainly not worth worrying about. All right. Here we go. Now... Let me get a clean slate. Maybe I'll leave this little piece here. But I'm going to get a clean slate. And let's see what we can come up with now. Thank you so much for being bold enough to give me your suggestions. I appreciate that. And you know what? If I took your suggestions and then I didn't like that either, then guess what? I can try something different than that. All right. So now I've got... You signed up. Yay. Aw, thank you, Edwinese. Thank you. Okay, so now this is what we're going to do. So I've opened this part up. And I still like the idea of having this on the edges. So I think this is going to be a cool thing. And like usual, you help me find the best solution. So now, if I look again here, the sunset, the sunset is very bright white yellow right there. Then, and it comes out a little bit, but then it goes to a darker yellow, to a few yellow browns. There's even a little yellow green in there. If my printer is printing accurately. So now I'm going to fold this, sit it here so I can see it. Oh, this is a cool color. Whoa! That might be really nice to have a little piece of. Because what you'll find with quilts is it's nice to have a pop of color. It's nice to go a little lighter and a little darker than what you first had. So now put that out of the way. Get one more piece of fusible. Now normally I use the glue. But since I'm doing this really quickly right now, I feel like... It's faster if I just use the fusible. Okay, so I'm going to tear off one side of the paper. There are a couple ways to remove the paper from fusible. You can take a pen like this. Oh, that's wonderful, Barbara. You can take a pen and just go right across like that. That will score the paper and then you can rip it off. Sometimes when I'm working, I'll go to the edge and I'll kind of tear. I'll try to tear it a little bit and it'll lift the paper up. And then that way you can pull it off 
from there. So there's there's different ways you you can try to get this paper off, but don't spend too much time um, and get frustrated trying to. This is a batik, I think. All right, and you know batiks have different a diff slightly different look from side to side. So just all right. So here we go. Right now, I'm just dealing with yellows and white yellow and a little bit of orange because that's what I see when I look at this. I don't see, you know, I don't see all of the varied colors like down here. All right. Boy, Jody, I wish you were here. Uh, Cheryl, I wish all of you were here to help me. Okay. Oh, that's wonderful, Barbara. Wonderful. Okay, so I might as well let's start with the brightest color. And I'll take this little piece right here because I see some bright white that goes, yellow white that goes that way. And I might, to make the edges look a little softer, I might overlap some of them. The thing I like about if you're going to use fusible to do something like this, Steamaseam 2 is sticky, so it kind of helps hold it. All right, so I'm going to put this one here. Then it looks a little greenish yellow, so I'll use this celadon here. And that kind of, it comes out a little bit. So it's just a matter of do shapes that you see. You know, it's so funny. When I was doing the stripes today, I thought, I really don't like those stripes. But I thought, you've got to try to do something differently. You can't just do the same thing all the time. But, you know, you've got to do it in a way that it makes you happy. So this is a very good lesson. All right, so I'm going to put this one here, and this goes out like this. All right. Now, the next, I see a little bit of orangey yellow, a little orange. So I could always, oh, this one doesn't have much on it. It didn't get stuck. All right, so what you can do is take the fusible off the paper and put it where you want. All right, so here I'm going to take this fusible and I'm going to kind of put it here. And then I'm going to take this and cut it a little bit. Next week, I will show you thread painting. And uh, I'll probably want to do it on my new machine anyway. So, okay. Let's see. Now I'll lay this here. Oh, it's got to come in more from what I'm seeing. So I'll have it come in this way. And it needs to be a little thinner. Now, I'm not going to iron these down until y'all say, yep, that looks great, Deb. Okay, but now we're starting to get a different look. And if y'all have to go, you go ahead and go. Don't worry, you guys. I'm just going to kind of putz a little bit more. But it was so great to see all of you. And I hope you're having fun getting ready for Christmas. All right, so this one... I'm going to kind of cut in like this and then go over and like this. Okay. So this is the next one. It is so good to see all of you. Have a great evening. I'm just going to do a little bit more before I go.
And then I'm going to go up and try to do some Zentangle, because I don't know how to do that. All right. So, I guess we're starting to get the shapes. We're starting to get the shapes. Nice. See oh, that was, I forgot to say hi to Carol. So good seeing you. Yay. Okay. Now, the next is this color. And the shape kind of looks like this. And up and over. Okay. So I'll pull the paper off of this. I'm trying to get enough done so you can let me know if you think... All right. Oh, come on. All right. Let's see. This should go this way. I don't know. Well, we will find out. I'm just going to keep putzing with it until we get something we like. Now, one thing that would work good down here is to come in and soften this where it meets. All right. All right. And this is going to go now this way. And I'm not worried about where this ends because I'm going to have those kind of bumping into it. All right. If you have any more suggestions, please feel free to tell me. Please, please, please. All right. Oh, Patricia's here. Hi, Miss Patricia. That is so great to see you. All right. So now I've got this. I've got this one. Now I need some bright or good solid yellow. Hmm. Ah, this is tricky. This is tricky, but I'm going to do it. I'm not going to let this beat me. So let's let me get over here. All right. I mean, let me see. I'm just I'm I'm here a little longer than normal, but I'm not having dinner tonight with Mark. And I'm just trying out some new things on this. And let's see. So if this came up, it would go over to this shape. And then back up. Okay. So this would go here. Hmm. Okay, now let me try this one. All right, so now this would go here. I don't know. We'll see. But it's got to be better than the stripes I had earlier. But I do love these stripes here. But I love the idea of having something a looser fitting here. And then this like log cabin look here. Oh, thank you, Mary. You're always so good it, and, and so supportive. Okay. So right here, I need a little bit of a darker orange. So I'm going to cut this and put it 
let me do my white yellow and do okay and you know i can always put these in as separate pieces because that was the whole point at first doing piecing the background doing something really interesting with the background so this is going to be like this i see this one kind of going this way and then I see this one kind of coming here and kind of coming in more and then coming over this way and going up. Oh, okay. All right. This is kind of what I'm seeing. Whether this will stay, I'm not sure. But I could always go over it, do it again. It's not. And I haven't ironed any of it down now because it has a sticky side. And uh, that way I can still move things around, pick it up, trim it off a little. Okay. So this... I'm going to put this piece in right here. This piece is going to go right here. Okay. This is going to come up this way. All right. All right, this is going to come. This here and this right here will kind of come up. Ha! Ah, this is how, this is how. It is so good to see you, Miss Cheryl Lemon. Oh. And, oh, and look, come back Sunday because we're doing our swirl tree. I'm going to do it in several different colors. The pattern is on our group's I.O. Okay. So I'm just going to do a few more pieces and then tell you good night. But it is awfully good to see you. Okay. And then this one is going to go here and you know why i'm glad i'm not sealing these down is because i might be putting some other colors under them too so i can still lift them up put a different color like some of my basic yellows but this is going to come up this way all right now i think i need to get some of my other yellows in here. I think this is, whoo, that is very bright. And this one is going to come, it's going to come off this way and come in and then come out here. And back in. I'm just kind of following what I'm seeing. Because technically, I'm just using it as my inspiration anyway. So, it's my, I want it to be my own, but inspired. So, okay. So, here is some of that really, really bold yellow. And this is going to come right here. Just make sure when you go to peel the paper off that the uh, fusible is in place. Okay, so this is going to go right here, right beside that one, and go off like this. All right, 
And then here, well, I've got some of that yellow here. I think it would be good to put some here. So I can't wait till Sunday and we do some of these decorations. I'm going to have plenty to show you. I've already been working on them. And that is exciting. I'm trying to get Christmas ordered because, boy, they keep telling us everything is going to be harder to get and take longer to come in. All right. Ah, I think I'm liking it already. What do you think? Ah, good point, Debbie. Good point. Especially as I go further up this way. And what I'm going to be doing is layering, too. So I'll come back some and put some on top of others. Now, let me... Some of this will go up under here. I think what I'm going to do is come in and do some layering. Let me show you what I mean. But I see what you say, some thinner. Yes, I do see that. Okay, so like this will come here. Actually, it should come like this. Then these will go on top of it. But I, I see your point is come in, you know, come in with some thinner strips. And I, I think that is a very good point. Because like with this, it's not all that color. And I will just start layering. I will be doing some layering on top too. I always start with laying in the basics, the basics of what I'm seeing. It's, it's kind of like blocking in your color and then come in and put other things on it. Okay. All right. So here... I think with this, I'm going to yeah, put that there. We will see. It's going to take me longer than I can do now, but I'm looking forward to this because I think y'all put me onto a really good path. All right. So now... And what I'm hoping, to, I'm hoping that I can lay in enough that then I lay in enough, then I can come put other stuff on top. So like this, go right into here. Ah. Oh. Let me see. Hmm. I think if I lay in the blocks, then I can come in with thinner strips that will make, like, you know, here, putting in some light and then coming in with, you know, some little dark pieces or something here and there to get, this is going to be tricky, isn't it? Let me see. This is, these are just going to be my main colors in that area. And then I will be coming back and 
like, let me just show you. Where did I see? This was up here. Okay. So I think what I'm going to be doing is do, doing a lot of layering on, I don't know, but I think once I get some more little strips and pieces that I'm really going to like this. Now, this is a very dark orange. So what I'm going to do with this is I am going to put use the back side of the fabric, which will work really good. All right. So. But like I can put this one in here to give. I don't know. Well. I think I've tried pretty hard for now, and I'm going to keep working on this, but I think it's better than it started out with that funny stripey look. One of you said that the top overpowered the bottom, and you were exactly right. And I think that once I tone this down, I'm blocking in color. Once I tone this down, then once I fill in, go back to the strippy look. For one thing, these strips are, aren't are as vastly different than what I was working on. So I'm going to keep blocking in the color and then I'm going to put in some highlights to make it look narrower so it'll look more like this. Okay. See how all the little things and I can do that with fabric, I can do it with ink tints, and I can do it with thread painting. But I think before you see me next week, I'm going to have this finished and looking right with my strips here. So I'm still doing, trying a very different background effect. Okay. Then when I come in next week, I will work on... Showing you how to thread paint. We'll do some bobbin stitching, bobbin work, which is where you take a thicker thread, put it in the bobbin, and sew it from the back side. So let me work on this, and um, let's see what I come back with next week. But I want to have it all done next week so that we can concentrate on the thread painting. Because especially with this woolly nylon. I think you'll really like, I'm going to do some tall grasses. Let me see. I'm going to do some tall grasses from here. Kind of, you know, so this, you know, peekaboo through the tall grasses. Oh, thanks. I will, I will work it out. But this woolly nylon is going to really show up on, you know, on the work. So, okay, guys. In fact, I might even do a little bit of work here by the pond, and we'll see. But mainly, I want it here so, like, you're looking through some of the tall savanna grasses and you see it. But it will get there, and I do appreciate. Thank you so much to those of you who were bold enough to give me hints and tips and how to make it better. Because you're right. It was like the stripes. I thought, well, I'm trying to do the effect of the background. But you're right. It overpowered the part of the quilt that I like best, which was the bottom. So I think, do you see how it, do you, we're starting to get there. Do you see it shaping up now? And as I do more and more, and don't forget, when you block in color, it'll get to a stage where it looks like a gawky adolescent. And then as you refine it, that's when it will all come together. But thank you, Jody and Jody and Cheryl. And oh, who else was it that gave me the suggestions of not doing that silly stripe? But do you see how 
the stripe along the edge, I think is going to look really cool. So I will get all of this worked out and have it complement the bottom. And, well, y'all did really good. And the, it takes a village to make an art quilter. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much for helping me. I tell you what, it's hard when you're trying to, like, change direction on camera. But that's what I kind of want to show you, that sometimes you just have to pull it apart and start again. And it's okay. It's part of the process. Not every coloring page that you did as an eight-year-old was worth keeping, you know? <laughs> so thank you for sharing this time with me. Come back Sunday. We're going to do our own swirl tree. I have free patterns for anybody that wants one. Send me an email to our time to quilt at twc.com. And don't forget, I will be also putting up the pattern for the Zentangle ornaments. Thank you to Bonnie um, from AQS for a wonderful pattern. So, and all I did was put more on the sheet. So, you, I'll be giving those to you too. Well, take good care. And I know that tomorrow, probably at 3.30, Mark's going to be very happy. And he can have whatever for dinner that he wants. So... <laughs> All right, everybody, take good care of yourself, and I will see you next week. Bye-bye. Thank you for your help. You were great. Thank you, all of you.